Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to today's roundup, a triple header of news stories which includes some big news regarding the future of the sport. And that is exactly where we are going to start today. Formula One has announced that all 10 teams have agreed to the new Concord Agreement and have therefore committed to the sport until the end of the 2025 season. The current commercial agreement, which is a deal between the teams, the FIA and the Formula One group, which dictates many things, including how prize money is distributed, was due to expire at the end of this season. Now, there has been much talk over the last few weeks and months about the negotiations going on behind the scenes, and questions have been raised about the future of some teams and manufacturers, including the likes of Haas and Mercedes, the latter having stated recently that they were not ready to sign up for anything just yet. However, yesterday afternoon, Ferrari, McLaren and Williams all announced that they had signed the new agreement and this morning, a joint statement was released by Formula One and the FIA confirming that in fact all teams had now signed and added. The agreement will secure the long-term sustainable future for Formula One and combined with the new regulations, will reduce the financial and on-track disparities between the teams, helping to level the playing field, creating closer racing on the track. Yesterday, Ferrari CEO Louis Camilleri described the agreement as an important step to ensure the stability and growth of the sport, adding, We are very confident that the collaboration with the FIA and Liberty Media can make Formula One even more attractive and spectacular, while preserving its status as the ultimate technological challenge. Claire Williams said that she believed the agreement is a major milestone in Formula One's development, and also represents a significant opportunity for her team to continue the journey back towards the front of the grid, and McLaren CEO Zach Brown stated, Everyone has had to give ground for the bigger outcome, which will be a more competitive, exciting and thriving Formula One for future generations, which in turn secures a healthy sport for both participants and fans alike. So there we have it then, the deal has finally been agreed by everyone, and that means the financial terms which were revealed earlier this year have been accepted, and that includes, for the first time in F1's history, a new cost cap, and in the case of Ferrari, less favourable commercial terms. However, according to the race, the Scuderia does retain its right of veto when it comes to the F1 regulations, and will still receive some form of long-standing team bonus. It is also believed that all four engine manufacturers will receive a small payout as a way of recognising the role they play in the sport. And if you would like to read a little bit more on all of this, you can find a link to that article by the race down in the description. Moving on though, and race director Michael Massey has said that he is confident the governing body can police the incoming ban on teams using multiple engine modes across a race weekend. As covered last week, the FIA is looking to introduce a new technical directive ahead of the Belgian Grand Prix that will force teams to use the same engine mode during both qualifying and the race, which would effectively ban the use of so-called party modes. The idea being that teams would not be able to turn the power up for qualifying and then back down again for the race, and indeed prevent the teams turning the engine down to help with reliability. A letter sent out ahead of the Spanish Grand Prix explained that the FIA were concerned that the complexity of the current units makes it hard for stewards to ensure teams are complying with the power unit's regulations, and that using different modes could put the team at breach of the regulation that states a driver must drive the car alone and unaided. However, despite the concerns they already have, Massey believes the FIA will be able to enforce the new directive. I think we are very confident, otherwise we wouldn't have gone down the road that we have. I know the technical team has done a huge amount of work on this, and has also consulted with the four power unit manufacturers to get their input. It is intended that the technical directive regarding the engine modes will be issued prior to the SPA event. Since the letter was first sent out to teams, there has been a mixed reaction to the news. Lewis Hamilton does not believe it will have the impact on Mercedes' performance that many may be hoping for. Charles Leclerc feels it is a positive for Ferrari, and Toto Wolff said last weekend the sport is, once again, trying to pull back the leaders. But Christian Horner feels it will be healthy for Formula 1 as it could help promote better and closer racing, but also reduce costs as, of course, developing the extra modes does not come cheap. How much will this impact Mercedes or other teams on the grid? Well, we'll find out next weekend when Formula 1 arrives in Belgium. One thing is for sure, it's going to be a very interesting story to follow. And finally, it is expected that Formula 1 will confirm a final 17 race calendar in the coming days and that calendar will, assuming the contract can be finalised, feature the surprise return of the Turkish Grand Prix. The current calendar already has 13 races confirmed with tracks including Mugello, Portimao, Imola and the Nürburgring all featuring, but it is believed that four more rounds will be added with the Turkish Grand Prix taking place on November 15th, that's two weeks after that race at Imola. 
There will also be two races in Bahrain, one on November 29th and the other on December 6th, with the season finishing on December 13th in Abu Dhabi. It is also believed that there are still plans in place for the second race in Bahrain to be run around the shorter layout of the track. If all of that turns out to be true, it would mean F1 abandoning plans to race in Asia, something bosses were still trying to achieve, and having already announced that the sport would not be heading to the Americas in 2020, it now looks likely this season will be run across Europe and the Middle East. When this news will be made official by Formula 1 is not yet known, but it is worth noting that this Friday will mark the 15th anniversary of the first ever Turkish Grand Prix, which took place back in 2005, and was of course won by Kimi Räikkönen. So perhaps any announcement will coincide with that. Of course, though, until it is made official, it still falls under speculation, but it is looking positive for fans of Istanbul Park. And the drivers are up for its return as well, with Romain Grosjean saying last weekend at the Spanish Grand Prix, I think it would be awesome. It's such a cool track. I really enjoy going there and racing. Turn 8 is a good one for the next, so I think it would be very fast. And Alexander Albon echoed all of that and expects the epic Turn 8 will be flat out in the current generation of cars. He also praised Liberty Media and Formula 1 for adding what he described as proper circuits to the calendar. I think we can all echo that, and 2020 could well be shaping up to be the best F1 calendar we've had in years. So, the drivers seem happy, I'm certainly very happy, but what do you guys think? Will you be pleased to see F1 back in Turkey, and what are your favourite memories of Istanbul Park? You can, of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. That is it for this video though, but don't forget you can follow me over on social media and you can find all of the links you need for that in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and hopefully I will catch you again in the next one. Bye bye.